Caesar had 16 legions in Greece, alongside 10,000 horsemen. Combined, the Roman army numbered over 90,000 men. Caesar spent a few weeks organizing this massive fighting force, catching up with his nephew Octavian. Caesar informed Octavian that he planned to bring him along for much of the Eastern Campaign. Caesar hoped that this campaign would give Octavian the experience he needed to be a great military commander. Octavian was not happy. War did not suit him. He preferred to stay in Rome and begin a career as a politician and scholar. But his duty to Caesar outweighed all his other preferences. More than anything, Octavian wanted to impress Caesar. He never voiced any of his complaints. Caesar then convened a war council, where he was met by his right-hand men, Mark Antony and another man named Lepidus. Decimus and Octavian also joined Caesar at the war council. Caesar wanted the campaign to begin immediately. While he underwent the mammoth task of organizing his army, he ordered Mark Antony to march into the tribal frontier that lay between Rome and Dacia. Antony took two legions and 1,000 horsemen, occupying the area without any issues. He began setting up camp on the border with Dacia. The Dacian kingdom was in the midst of a huge civil war. Not long after Caesar arrived in Greece, the nobles of Dacia assassinated their king, Berebista, beginning a long power struggle. The kingdom was now divided into four parts. In the southeast, the coastal Greek city-states under Dacian rule formed a temporary confederation, afraid of what would happen to them during the chaos of the civil war. They sent a man named Acarnion to negotiate with Antony. Acarnion informed Antony of the situation in Dacia, explaining that the Greek city-states wanted Roman protection and were willing to submit to Roman rule. Without waiting for orders from Caesar, Antony marched ahead into Dacia, securing the vulnerable Greek cities. Caesar was all too pleased to hear that the Romans now had a plethora of Greek allies in Dacia, and that his enemies were fighting each other. In early April, Caesar arrived in Dacia with the remaining 14 legions. At the same time, a large Roman fleet sailed up the Bosporus, blockading the Dacian coast. The Dacian civil war was now reaching a turning point. Two warlords, Dysus and Pedipor, had amassed most of the kingdom's military might. They clashed at the Battle of Apulon. Dysus' forces emerged triumphant, killing Pedipor and absorbing much of his army. Dysus then infamously ordered the execution of many of his prisoners, killing all who he believed were a threat to his reign. This caused several Dacian nobles to defect to Caesar. They suggested he march to the Dacian capital, Sarmizikatuza, and capture it immediately. Caesar marched with ten legions towards Sarmizikatuza. Lepidus stayed behind to defend the Greek cities with two legions. Mark Antony led four more legions into the country's north, seeking to conquer the domain of Cadizo, another Dacian warlord. Cadizo knew his meager army stood no chance. Many of his warriors wanted to fight Dysus, who had led a conspiracy against Burabista, and thus were not motivated to fight the Romans. After a brief skirmish, Cadizo surrendered to Antony, becoming a client of the Roman Republic and adding his warriors to the Roman army. Caesar soon arrived at Sarmizikatuza, laying siege to the city and battering the defenses with siege artillery. Dysus' position was now looking grim. In the span of a few months, he had gone from the winning faction of the Civil War to now facing a huge roman dacian alliance against him. Dysus was aware of the Roman superiority on the battlefield, and thus began a guerrilla war to fight the Romans. He sent a small portion of his army to harass Roman forces near Sarmizikatuza. However, some of Dysus' tribal allies, such as the Boii, were skeptical of his plan, viewing it as cowardice. Many of his tribal allies defected to the Romans. Some Dacian nobles now viewed the war as already lost, and began threatening to leave Dysus' army. Dysus needed a victory. He took a large portion of his army south, and attempted to ambush a Roman legion marching through the area led by Octavian. But several Dacian defectors revealed the plot to Caesar, who marched into battle. 
The battle began with the Romans charging straight into the Dacian ranks, beginning a fierce melee. During the brutal fighting, Caesar and his cavalry managed to outflank the Dacian army, attacking the rear. Surrounded, the Dacian army broke and retreated. Almost the entire Dacian army was wiped out. After the battle, Dysus took his own life. One of the Dacian nobles took the warlord's body to Caesar, claiming that all of Dacia was now loyal to Caesar and the Roman Republic. The campaign had been a decisive success. In only a year, Caesar had conquered the whole of Dacia, making it the latest province of the Roman Republic. Caesar left four legions to garrison Dacia, alongside a powerful local army that was now loyal to Rome. He traveled to Antioch with his army, summoning all of the client monarchs of Rome's east to meet him at a grand summit. The Roman east would now prepare to invade the empire of Parthia.